to the I didn't get to get in on that whole thing. So, hi James, how are we doing today? Hi, I'm all right. Thanks, James. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Skin so, the phone. Um, one of the questions that I want to start off was was one of the questions I've always been wondering when it comes to like musicians in recent times is like, how have you found inspiration over lockdown, and has it been hard? Um. Yeah, well, that's really good. I thought I thought you was gonna go all the way down to like, where where were you born? Where is the, this is better. No, we do the it's, good questions. Here. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, for inspiration, inspiration is, uh, the inspiration's been hard. Is because it's it's something that you've, I've usually found inspiration from a lot of of doing. Like I've always been a person that's been good out of having something to do and always been being busy so um having nothing to do at some point has just sort of sort of <laughs> sent me, me, into, me into a bit of a spiral in terms of mental health and all that which was a lot of fun but um yeah I, I inspired my um i found inspiration through routine uh routine was sort of a a good a good thing for me to just try and work on because it's sort of um Music was always something that um, from about age eight was the only thing I could really communicate to the world with. I was sort of a very quiet child until I picked up a guitar that my cousin left me and started playing Beatles songs. So <laughs> I just found it. Um, it's always been sort of like my blanket in terms of coping with the world and trying to find clarity and all that. So when it was when it seemingly all was taken away, it, I sort of had to go back to where I started and my roots and how I um, trying to remember how to write songs again and how to how to do how to do things in a normal way. Um, so I found a lot of inspiration from a book by um, um, there's a guy called Stephen Pressfield who wrote a book called The War of Art, and it was about um, ba- about battle and resistance and. Um, the, the the it was the process of doing creative work well and then um, a, a lot of the major thing i got out of it was um to be able to write songs and to be professional about it you have to <laughs> have to learn to sit down and um, actually face the demon of resistance and all that it's like fighting a dragon every time you sit down to try, to try and write a song but um i found inspiration from doing a lot of reading and just sitting down and just working through the feelings that i had at the time and um journaling was a, a good one as well uh just <laughs> sort of write pages and pages of the random stuff that was on my head and but yeah i found inspiration a lot from the process of doing and then um, going through uh, going through bad times again recently i found that's a way i've sort of tried to get more inspiration you just sort of analyze what's going on in your head and then um and then just sit down and write about it. It's, it's like <laughs> simple. Do, it's like do even though you don't feel like doing it. It's like if you yeah. if you still even though I think it's been overlooked by a lot of people in this lockdown. Where, like you said before, we're so used to getting about and doing all these things mm. and being social animals. And when that was taken away from us, and you lose that routine that you had, mm. you've got to try and establish a new routine then in it. And you don't feel like doing anything because it's different it's like alien to you but yeah working through that and sort of figuring out where your head's at and how you feel about all this again that's bringing more emotions to the table what you can feed into your creativity and yeah. yeah. we yeah. discussed it a lot over lockdown didn't we me and you about like the idea of like routine <laughs> being so helpful and like the idea of like discipline is freedom <laughs> yeah. in a sense yeah where like if you're able to lock yourself in this like routine and be able to like get yourself in a set way of doing things every single day it's really helpful to give you like options and what to do that day mm-hmm. what was it it was um it was that um what's what's the philosopher name that we've been talking about nietzsche oh yeah friedrich nietzsche yeah. where like yeah. one of his He's books is basically like the the true f- the freest man is the person who isn't controlled by their emotions yeah and that's kind of like what the routine does yeah. doesn't it you're not like forced to do stuff because you feel like doing it you've got this routine it just allows you instead of like because you guys know when you su- like if you suffer from anxiety or anything like yeah. that it can get to certain points where and it, it changes from day to day sometimes some days you'll wake up and it, it, with the emotions coming around your head it's just like a big messy ball of string and you don't <laughs> feel like doing anything you don't feel like you can focus that energy but if you give yourself a little bit of discipline and it's like it's not about being strict with yourself so much but just being making sure that you get a certain few things done within a day yeah. that you say like going out for a little run or something like that yeah. that's something you know is going to make you feel good like making music if you yeah. if you say right forget about this for a minute i'm just gonna yeah. sit down and get into yeah. music. my anxiety is sort of a, of a weird thing where i know i'm um, speaking to a lot of people i know there's it's it's a weird thing where it sort of affects people in completely different ways but mine's a mine's i sort of i try to cope with it with by trying to do a lot of things and being a bit of 
instead of I always felt like I needed to do something rather than I could just sit there. <laughs> like my dad says, he do, um, we have this problem in our family where we can't just sit down and do nothing for like for a minute. We have exactly to always be doing I mean. something. But um, um, you, you touched on philosophy, but um, I sort of um, <laughs> I found help in a lot of really cheesy self help books after a while, like four hour work week, and was like, this makes me feel slightly better. Um, but um, eventually I got into a lot of um, um. I touched on stoicism and a lot of that sort of philosophy mm. uh i wouldn't call myself a stoic but I, th- I liked some of the um like seneca was had a load of good stuff in there marcus aurelius was quite good have you seen that have you seen the daily stoic yeah I'm, I, I, I like okay. um, ryan holiday in his books yeah, and stuff yeah, like that yeah. but um i found a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of that sort of made sense in the sense of the by having this self self-discipline with yourself and being in control of your, your own ego and your own um own inhibitions like it's it's not something the world needs uh, to hear about it's just sort of like you need to you need to have a discipline in order to do the the, the right things and the to create good work and stuff like that it's a it's a worry i tend to yeah. hold on to a lot but um I, I, i've i've just tried to to keep going and i think there's there's definitely a there's definitely pride in keeping going rather than not keeping going. Yeah. So I've tried to hold on to that as much as I can do. I <laughs> suppose it, we can all... Sorry, James. I was going to say it's quite interesting. I was I was going to say like there was a Pitchfork article today on like... Um, it was like on a Julian Baker review and it was like way too hard in yourself. It's become its own genre. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that's so like <laughs> after the lockdown, I feel like that's going to be so prominent because we had artists like Phoebe Bridges, Julian Baker, Father John Misty. Yeah. yeah. But now even people like Hayley Williams and Taylor Swift have got onto this genre. Right, really introverted, like and that's kind of like and, and that, albums, and it? you've been onto that for a while, haven't yeah, you, yeah. as well? Yeah, there are a lot of my, um, very, um, yeah, from quite a few years ago, I've sort of got, um, uh, sort of got into uh, Sufjan Stevens and um, that was sort of that lot of that lot of scene. But noticing it coming up quite a lot with like the Taylor Swift folklore, that was a that, that was quite a good album for me during the lockdown. Um, hearing the hearing the sounds I've been creating for quite a few years on the main uh, main um, the main stage was quite a nice feeling to say like, oh, there's people people get this. People get sort of kind of sad songs that um, and um, talking about things that are just sort of. I like to. I've I've come to understand a lot of my music is tends to be just trying to clarify things that are going on in my life, and it's always been that sort of for for me. But it's nice to see that uh, other people are relying on uh, relying on that as well. Like well, that's uh, why it's such a good outlet, isn't it? Because you can you can take all those feelings and put it into a song and, yeah. and not be embarrassed about it. You know what I mean? It's like it can make it can help you make more sense of how you feel exactly, when, yeah, when yeah. you just get that down on paper. And like like you said, like I agree. I think it's really good that people are getting more interested in that stuff. It kind of feels like people are starting to be more comfortable opening up about things like that. About yeah, it's especially when music stuff, like yeah. that on the main stage, it starts a conversation as well. Like I, I don't know how much Taylor Swift, um, I'd have to go back into lyrics. She doesn't necessarily touch about her. Uh, I remember she said that um, she didn't necessarily touch on her own experiences for once, which was although she wasn't she was talking the, through the lenses of characters and stuff like that which was for her a new experience uh, but i think it would be for the amount of inspiration a lot of other songwriters are having from these uh, big albums talking about talking about um like a sad acoustic music almost it's going to be nice to have that yeah. on the scene rather than this rather than this very much like egotistical like uh, pushy sort of thing that's on the radio one and stuff like that it's nice to have nice to have a bit of change yeah it's definitely like a massive rise like i am i know in the uk obviously we've always had that indie scene thanks to like Hmm. ever since the 90s of like oasis and then into like arctic monkeys and then we had like catfish in the bottle man yeah but it definitely seems like this is a massive rise of like even if it's like it did start off acoustic but there's like a lot of bands that do it as well like Fever Bridges is a lot more like it's gone less acoustic over the years mm. so it's obviously Julian Baker Taylor Swift stuff had a band involved so it I think this is definitely like especially like I said after lockdown I feel like this is definitely going to be music that a lot of people are going to relate to and I think it's going to be quite popular yeah and say so you've been doing this for years so is that like an exciting thing yeah it's, it's good for me I've um I, I recently been um sort of because uh, i've got my next few because i wrote a lot over lockdown i've sort of got my next sort of few singles um planned out on what i'm going to do in the next few months uh the the, the, the dates are sort of wishy-washy but <laughs> they're getting there i know what i'm releasing but um it's been nice to see the see what the what the environment's like out there in the industry and um i'm sort of i've been looking to different sources in terms of what i'm going to do i'm probably going to be as, as a lot of artists i'm going to be expanding my sounds with more electronic elements and stuff like that but it's nice to see that there's there's going to be an environment and a, there's going to be an audience out there for them yeah there's definitely 
definitely definitely a, a fan base there for yeah. you and like it must be kind of relieving as well that i know you've had all this time in lockdown where maybe we've had a lot more time off work and things like that and there's been yeah. a bit more time to gather that music together like you've got those next few singles ready to go you know what i mean yeah. you must feel like you've got like a yeah. bit of momentum now you yeah know it feels I mean? like for so long i've been at um because i was like 14 when i first <laughs> i was uh, it was at uh, e-rooms actually i was, uh, did them um, there was a uh, there was something going on where I managed to get um, get to record a couple of singles and um and that was that was was really where I was starting to learn how to play play guitar and how to write songs um specifically I listened to who's it Gonzalez's um heartbeats and then I was pretty much set off from there but um Great but yeah, I've, I've been I feel like I've been on the start line for quite a while because it was BBC introducing for me was um was at age fifteen which was which was mad I think and my brother was like my brother's like ten and sixteen now and I think oh my god I was your age when that was that was happening and then. Um, at the time, I sort of felt like this. I felt like this urgency that, like, okay, this is this is it now. I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna become famous. I'm gonna do all this sort of stuff. And then yeah, yeah. it was in the years that followed. Like, actually, that would have been a horrible idea. Why would you? Why would you want to become famous and do all the, be on the limelight at age 16 when you're still trying to figure everything out? So, yeah, for, uh, no, go on. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, this like lockdowns tend to be a blessing for me in in terms of forcing me to stop and think like if i'm gonna if i'm gonna do this i need to do it in a in a right way rather than just sort of going to it blindfolded so it's nice to have um i'm going into the studio in the next in the next month or so and then um, it just where uh, i've got the the skills I've, I've sort of built over lockdown in terms of what i've been developing but it's nice to have that vision of um where i'm taking the next few steps and building that momentum and then um, how i'm it's sort of developing about how i'm gonna how i'm gonna have my own voice in terms of i know social media is a big part of it but i'm gonna i want to use it in a way that's not like every every other artist using it it's sort of like it's all ideas i'm still developing now but it's nice to know i've got a bit of a road for a road to build momentum and then um, and uh th- i'm still i'm um, look at the moment looking into what i'm going to do after that as well but it's nice to be at the start line ready to just run off as soon as that first single comes out so yeah, they've got yeah. like a big grand plan after like lockdown ends in june uh, hopefully the, <laughs> fingers crossed i've got uh, i've got a bit of a bit of a grand plan going uh going um in the um fingers crossed an ep at the end of august but um the, nice. the single's coming out every every six weeks or so but um it's all touch wood but so it's, you just it's got like a bit of a loose really schedule going on yeah I, th- minute, I think yeah. it's i think it's good to keep it loose as well because um I, I tried to release some singles over lockdown and then this of course there's a lot going on in terms of like um the delays and stuff like that but it's nice to have like the pressure to be on but not to be on as well like you can like if it goes out of this date it's fine if it goes out a week out it's all right it's, yeah. it's all right it's all about just um letting people know the sound i've got at the moment and that um if you want to join along for the ride in the next um, years to come then that's that's great and if you don't that's fine as well but um yeah, yeah. i've just like, this is what i've got to say at the moment and it, there's going to be more in the future as well i was going to say before like do you think maybe because you were talking about the bbc introducing mm. him before when you were like 16 and yeah obviously at that age you st- you're still quite naive aren't you even though like i remember being 16 i can speak for myself and you feel like you've sort of got it figured out don't yeah. you? you feel like you know where you're going but do you feel like having them them years since being that age and having that bit more life experience has helped you as an artist like you're more considerate about what you're gonna do with yourself as an artist oh now yeah and definitely what moves you make definitely definitely i had um there was an amazing i I'd never never shown bbc exp- uh, introducing the experience for a second because it was really it's part of what made me who i am today as a person and as a musician but it was um sean mcginty was um the 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 dj um bbc radio lanks was a really really big part of me uh um, part of um me seeing the the industry as it is just a little bit i managed to get to play um uh, a, f- a big festival in lancaster where the like ocean color scene was there and like ray morris and it was just like a massive eye opener but um it was great i sort of like i know you, as you're saying about your 60 uh, you're 15 16 like oh i know exactly what i'm doing yeah and yeah. then then sort of life things happen and yeah i had my gcse's and stuff so everything naturally slowed down i just couldn't keep up but um but uh, you sort of um being in liverpool and being lipper as well was a big thing about learning just learning life and learning um, skills needed but it's it's definitely something that i needed was the the space and the just the stillness of just having like let's just slow down in seconds if you're going to do this how are you going to do it properly and how you're not gonna not gonna rush into things and then it's a big thing about ego as well i think in terms of like if you the all the best artists out there have or the, you could you could argue that some have a massive ego but the ones that have lasted are the ones that have known their industry and known what they're doing is good and have gone about helping people rather than doing it for their own self-fulfilling gain so that's if um the way i want to release music is in a way that's 
I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the stories that I know and the, the way that I understand the, the world is, and then um, but I'm also gonna try and help people as most as I can I'm gonna be um, involved with other artist stories and help produce if I need to because I think that's that's a way that's that's a way that's better for better for the industry as a whole is to be a person that's um, not in it for their own gain as such but like they're going to release music and tell their own stories but they're also going to be there for other artists and help help producing and help build the scene around them because it's going to it's going to be better for people to come in and yeah, it's yeah. better than than just sitting in a sitting in a room on your own just writing songs and if you're inclusive it's like we were talking we've talked about this about like a scam scene and things mm. like that over the years where like people talk about this scene but then really uh, over the years i've noticed a lot of animosity between artist yeah. almost like it's a competition mm-hmm. when really if you just came together with a bunch of people who are making music and yeah. enjoying it and shared each other's experiences and talked about things and helped each other out with certain things and everyone would develop as as an artist yeah. together then yeah. you know brian I mean, you know talks about that in um um he talks about um i think it's a scenist or something like that it's a good way instead of um just one person being a genius with this sound it's a group of people having this sound and working it together but i think that's that's yeah. what the, i think that's that's a future of music i would like to see is very small groups from these big groups of things yeah like, say so it's all all these big massive like changes in music have always been off a scene it's never really been off a band and if exactly, you think yeah. it's off a band if you do the history of the band it's always off a scene mm-hmm. and say so one of the things so like as d rooms we do like a lot of education stuff yeah and um i i got my ba in music but one thing i always and i want to get your opinion on this james like mm. one thing i was going over the years after learning i wish we'd learn more about the industry yeah yeah like as because it, it's one of them things where it seems like a lot of the teachers that do teach in like union stuff don't actually understand it as much as i wish they did yeah because there's a lot of lessons to be taught like you said about building scenes mm. and building friendships and building communications with other bands and putting on your own gigs mm. and finding people of similar genres and lifting people up and like one of the big things you don't see anymore which was massive back in the day was like ep splits yeah, with yeah other bands no one yeah. ever does that anymore mm. do you know like where you've got a band that you really like and they really like you and you both and you want to interact with each other's fan bases you do like an ep split the only mm. scene you see that in nowadays for me is like sludge metal bands and stuff like that yeah, yeah exactly, like punk yeah. bands and stuff yeah, like that yeah, that are still yeah. very like diy but like yeah. i don't know why it's never really been done in like the acoustic scene yeah i know um i know um recently there's um there's a guy from the from the from the punk background um frank turner did a the, the similar thing I, I can't for the life of me think of the other artist who was on the ep but he does that a lot um that i think that's from um extra, uh, oh, i can't think of the, the label but the, uh, that is a is still a very rare thing in the acoustic and it's like singer songwriter scene but um uh, what was your question again about um, the uh, business how do, sort of thing? do you think that unis especially and even in college that our education on the music industry needs to be like increased way more i think um uh, my um my background in terms of education from the industry came a lot from um i was a lot of um you you don't tend to get it in high school <laughs> any music education yeah, as no. such I, I was lucky to get a, re- a really great education in high school in music but um a lot of my business industry stuff came from just sort of just from from youtube and just getting what 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 music and just talking to musicians what they thought they know was sort of like assumptions uh luckily when i went to went to college my um my business teacher is um brian campbell but he was in the uh, the band clinic uh, he was an indie band from liverpool um, but um th- thankfully his perspective perspective on the industry was um he was <laughs> um there's the stories about how um he talks about how his band um, was was um the the the, the joys of his band and what sort of things he, he did well he likes to joke that he's always been, <laughs> he tries to mention every conversation that his band supported radiohead <laughs> and it's like just support radiohead but um just a little buzz line gotta yeah. get that in there <laughs> but um <laughs> oh by the way <laughs> yeah thankfully i've got some experience from him because he's been in the actual industry it's nice to know know that but i do understand as well that that's 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 kind of a rarity in terms of universities and colleges but, but again um, it's like it's self-driven from your side isn't it you've yeah. got to go out and if you want to learn about that aspect of the industry you can but i feel like a lot of people who are creative don't really take it upon themselves to learn the drier side of how the industry I works think, i think you have to be you able to do I mean? the jobs that nobody wants to do to, in order to make it and part of that's learning your industry and learning how the how them um, how how things are working now and how you how you can be able to make money i think there's a there's the there's the dreamers and the people who actually do stuff as well as dreaming so you need to be able to have that sort of side but i think um th- there's a, there is perspective about that, but it's like Alex said, I think the the people who actually 
to go on um go on to do well are the ones that um get take that if they have a university or college experience in business they, they, they take that information but then they also go further and see like well how's this actually working in perspective like yeah. what's social media like what's the trends what what are people doing in, in interacting with music like yeah so one of the things i always wished i learned and i've because uh, one of these things I like to do is when you see an artist, you know, like get really big on the radio and you've never heard them before, I like to Wikipedia their label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And see what's going on there. Check out who Because <laughs> how is this person out of nowhere just like popped to number one in the charts? Exactly, yeah. And it's mad where like the amount of times I've really wished that someone taught me like what an A&R person is, what a yeah. distributor is, what a label is, what a sub-label is, what's a parent label. Yeah. All these kind of things where you're like, oh, this person signs an X label. You Google it. Oh, it turns out it's like a parent label of EMI. But yeah. again, I think it's like when it comes to the money side of things and it's it's like when, you know, when you're in school and you leave school and you think, damn, I wish they would have taught me about mortgages and overdrafts yeah. and all this kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. When it comes to do with money, it's like an insular little society where they know what the score is. So if you but don't even know at like the, the biggest, is, like even at Lipper, they don't teach these things. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So it's I almost probably like should comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's getting a bit hairy there. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> it's like it's almost like they don't want you to know these things because they don't want you to be able to take advantage of that knowledge and use it to to make money and and to succeed. You know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to take it all upon yourself to 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 learn that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's definitely important for. Um, I try my best to do this as well, is just to look at, um, is to is to understand the the industry as best I can and how I can work work with that in the future. So like at the at the moment I'm independent and I'll be quite happy to to work in that. But I do understand that that in order to make it, you're gonna need you're gonna need to have a team and to understand your industry. So I, I think th- what's good nowadays, I feel like I don't know about you, but I feel like there's there's more creative people, not just musicians, but people just within that industry. Who are, who are more willing to work independently. There's independent companies, yeah. who there's in, independent distributors out there. There's plenty of small independent record mm. labels that I follow. That, like Blah Records, they have great success. Like, yeah, yeah. Distributing their own but stuff. But even then, they're like super stuff. rare. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, but I think nowadays as a musician, or as if, you, if you're in a certain kind yeah. of scene, you have to think, what do I want? Where do I want this to go? Do I want to reach as many people as possible? Yeah and appeal to everybody or do i want to really appeal to a small group of people you know what i'm saying i think like the big takeaway is a lot of the time is like you've got to realize this is graft yeah Yeah. it's 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 not a thing where you can just sit in your room record some music and release it you've got to like Mm -hmm. work on it and that's the one thing i i I really wish was like drilled into my head when i was in college in Mm -hmm. uni i've seen it so many yeah i've seen it so many times with my with um, with people i know with just local industry like it's just like you you see someone spend loads and loads of money recording this album and then they just like chuck it out and then it just you just don't get any any, why am i not the next billy eilish (laughs) why am i not the next billy eilish because you haven't worked your industry as well there's no brand there's no promotion there's no like there's no there's no there's no there's no story behind it and i think that's that's something i struggle with as well it's uh, i've i've always struggled with social media um the start of this year i took a break because it was just too much for me and i realized how much how much I, I sort of depended on it without actually doing anything so i know um um i think in the future i'm going to use it in a very in a very sparse way but one that's effective yeah and uh, one that's one that's actually me and one that's not going to be like just hey guys this is my next single here's go and yeah. stream this and but i think um i think the st- story is not something that's people are drawn to story and i don't think it's something that's that's taken upon in in artists in social media um, these days it's very toxic isn't it like when you go on social exactly, media yeah. there's there's a lot of toxicity because there's people can remain anonymous and say things without it affecting their lives at all like yeah there's no consequence to that so yeah i think it's yeah it's, it's there's, there's no it's very toxic but there's no honesty as well there's no although though that's it's gotten a lot better recently with people talking about mental health um but it's i think it's it's something that's still like if if your average person it's you still there's still the sense of you you promoting yourself constantly and i know that's sort of the sort of the game when you're a musician it's 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 annoying that it, i find it's annoying that it comes with the title now if you're going to be a musician you have to force yourself through this through this thing the thing that's hacking at your brain constantly but you need to you need to learn how to uh, well i think i need to learn how to use that in a way that's that's that's, that's not going to harm me and not going to harm my audience but it's well, going to be effective as well but you've like You've got quite a good, way, like the way you put things across. I've seen it when you've released singles through social media and stuff, and it never comes across as mm. like egocentrical self-promotion. Yeah, you're just putting your music out there and saying, you know, 
everyone go and check out and you're doing your own artwork and things like that mm. and it's all your you've got the reins creatively there so oh it's, yeah. thank you very much you know what <laughs> i mean that's that's never like that's not something that i've ever yeah. thought but i do get what you mean you've got to sort of you got to be considerate about how you yeah. how you do those things yeah 100 percent. um so one final question as as this has been going on for a bit um i like to ask this because I, I heard this on like a radio six interview with like dave Grohl, and i thought yeah. it was a really good question so like four albums to give us homework for first year music students so this is like oh. the first year in the college and you've got to give them four albums and say if you are, if you study these albums you'll be good for life it's oh, tough, Jesus. <laughs> that's um, called on the spot on the spot um i should have pen and paper so i could just list them down but i'm just gonna go off the top of my head but um it's where do you take this perspective as well as like what was with so, I, see, with so I, that's it so like the question is less like what's your favorite albums what would you give to music students like their first year music students in college like here this and this is, is like their intro class like okay. when it comes to like songwriting music production performance what's like the best of the best when it comes to them that they can learn off and hone their skills ah uh, jeez okay um um uh the, the first one that comes to mind is um uh, I'm a massive Beatles fan. That's how I. That's how I learned. Learned my. Um, <laughs> that's how I learned how to play. I. I had this little black guitar, three quarter sized one, and a little black Beatles book. And I just sat down and it's like I'll learn this song, then I'll learn this next one. There, but um, the the album that um, that was the a real education for me and that I listened to nonstop was the White Album. It's, it's this massive exploration on the whole of music. You've got like country songs and you got acoustic, you got rock, you got like um ambient music the first like tape loops going round and round you got classical but that's that by listening to that first you're gonna get a you're gonna get the the songwriting of the beatles probably at the peak and then um also the random stuff of the industry as well um the album after that in terms of providing honesty in your music i would go a few years later to journey mitchell's blue um there's a there's there's uh, when I first listened to that album a few years ago, it just sort of solidified like, oh, wow, that's how honest you can be in a in a in a in a record. Um, L- Little Green is just a massive one for me in terms of. Um, she talked about uh, giving up her own child because she was too poor to um, um, too poor to to to, uh, to raise her, and then um, the the social services just taken her away. And then um, it wasn't until years and years after that she discovered who she was. Um, but. Um, but that's that's really an album of of honesty and one that um, for anyone songwriting you need to learn how to how to portray portray your own life in a way that's not too showboaty, not too cheesy, but uh, in, in a way that's in a way that's natural and a way that's gonna um, help others as well. Uh, third album, oh God, <laughs> why is this so hard? Um, <laughs> It's a good question. Your man. mind always goes blank when you get asked, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think, yeah, um, yeah. I had to think about this quite hard when I did mine. Uh, Blonde by Frank Ocean is another one in terms of a Good modern album. one. I don't know why Good that album. came. Yeah. The this album. man will vouch for that. <laughs> that, is, that. I think that's that's the album's album of the 21st century. I don't think you can. True. You can just can't get much much better. I haven't seen much better in in the years the years since in I terms of the production is so clean on that. It's so well, it's like so clean, but it's so sparse. There's hardly any drums, but it it's it's a, it's an it album. Provokes a lot out of very little. It's an yeah, it's an album of feeling almost like. And yeah, yeah. uh, I've heard in a few interviews that. Um, in the New York Times interview, he, like one of the only ones he did for the album, he was just sort of about like, um, he would only he would only he would keep going and going like with fifty versions of like White Ferrari or something like that until he had the feeling he wanted. But um, in terms of music students listening to it, you need um, it's a really good exercise and very clean, minimal production, but in a way of chasing a feeling. Like you can listen to Ivy and that's the first time you've been in love, and then it's like white ferrari is just sitting down in your room very depressed but like very melancholy like it's just oh, it's just unbelievable but yeah um so that was uh what was i said so, so you got one more you got, three now, you got yeah. one more yeah, yeah, one i could song. talk for hours and hours on different albums that have um oh, you might have to cut the pauses in between <laughs> this but we're um, fine we're fine we'll keep him you know say so, it's an hour question and when i was thinking of mine it, it's really hard because you really want to give your favorites but then I always think back to when I was in my first year and what would I like to be given to me yeah. to like 
A lot, a lot of my favorite albums. I don't know about you, but a lot of my favorite albums probably wouldn't be very good examples. Yeah, yeah, of yeah. yeah. How you do an album, you know what I mean? It's normally yeah. like the opposite of what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, I'd, I'd say this one just because it's <laughs> it's kind of one of my favorites, but I think it's uh, from the people who've listened to it. They, they've they've definitely got. Um, I know Taylor Swift's a massive one for a folklore album, but um, Forever Forever Go is just a. It's it sort of goes hand in hand with blue for me in terms of um in terms of portraying emotion um but i think for me for me um portraying your emotions in a way that's clear and based on feeling is um is one of the one of the best things you can do as a songwriter so for a, f- a first year music student i would definitely give them this album um justin vernon had just broken up with his um with his girlfriend and with his band and he was um dealing with loads of loads of issues how uh, mental health and physical health so he went off to his um his his dad's dad's hunting cabin in vermont and um and then recorded this this album with just like two sm57s and just his voice and a guitar and maybe a bit of drums but it's just if, for me when i listened to that i i can picture where i was when i was listening to that I was in my nan's um nan's um, back room with, with the stereo on it i had it on cd and i was just listening with my head closed behind the speakers and i was just like what is this sound but um that really inf- that really informed me about how to how to betray massive space with some with only minimal equipment and minimal with just your voice and just your guitar but i think the album would show how to how to betray emotion how to uh, do a lot with very little and shows that you only need your laptop and just one microphone to do to tell a story and to tell a story well so what album was that uh for emma forever ago by bonnie bear sorry i just went off on a tangent but yeah there we go yeah, listen when you're it. passionate you're passionate yeah, aren't yeah, you? yeah. so what what was the final four so that was do you remember oh yeah there was the white album the beatles um blue Joni mitchell uh blonde frank ocean and then also forever forever ago by um uh bonnie bear i'd give that a solid choice to be so fair there you have it if, if, <laughs> that's if, a lot yeah. of my influences Honest, but <laughs> yeah to be fair i reckon that's a solid choice for a lot of them bonnie bear is very good especially like and frank ocean for doing very similar things i love yeah. bonnie bear's guitar sound as well yeah, like yeah. like what's that song holocene is it um, yeah that's um it's just him going into it i think it's a le- it's a les paul like a 50s one just going into a fender ramp but it's just it just sounds like glass yeah. it, it sounds like just glitter you know what i mean it just sounds brilliant so there you have it. If, if if anyone doesn't know any of those four albums, definitely go and give them a listen. <laughs> yeah, I, I would definitely say Joni Mitchell is obviously like a folk classic. Yeah. yeah. And everyone knows the Beatles around here. <laughs> to some people, it's unfortunate. Well, yeah, it depends <laughs> It depends who you are, doesn't it? It depends yeah, how many yeah, conversations yeah, yeah, you've yeah. had in a boozer about how yeah. the Beatles are the best band in the how world. How many arguments in uni you've had with your teachers. But um, I definitely think that the Beatles so- did a lot for songwriting and certainly early on in the career with the the sound engineering side of things the beatles and george martin did yeah. some absolutely yeah. george martin stuff. was crazy Jeff good Emmerich as well was a very unsung hero in terms of the getting the getting the sounds like he invented them um, automatic double tracking like which was which was just bonkers that the the amount of experimentation and the stuff that was developed in the space of like 10 years is unreal by the same a group of people it's yeah bonkers. But that vocal sound that they got doing those the double tracks <sighs> yeah. and stuff that is brilliant and it, it's bonkers. Does, it sounds great it does so do you want to shout out anything before we finish like uh, um any singles you got coming out um i'm not sure when this is coming out but there's going to be a single um coming out in june time to look out for but um uh, to see where I'm at, I'm at um, jamesjacksonmusic.com online, and that you can sign up to my mailing list. Where it's probably the best way to reach me. That's boss. Thank also, you very much for showing up. No, Everyone, also much. make sure you go and check out James Jackson on Spotify because there's yes. a load of really good singles up there already. So <laughs> go and get on them. Thank you. Thank you for showing up for the first ever episode of this. <laughs> no worries. It's yeah. been a great interview. We talked about a lot of good stuff. I'm yeah. happy with it. Yeah, it's been good, guys. It's been uh, E Rooms Radio. Until next time, then. <laughs>